everyone. Welcome into the Flippin' Hippos YouTube channel. I'm Star. If you're new here or you have not already, please consider subscribing to the channel and helping us feed a hungry hippo. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up. So this week we're going to be delving more into the bullet journal videos and the series that I'm doing on setting up your bullet journal for 2024. We've done a couple of videos already, so I'm going to create a playlist on this channel, probably call it Bullet Journal 2024 or something more clever if I can be creative, but I will be creating a playlist to put all these videos into. So far, we've covered lists that you can make that will help you stay on task, be more organized, be more efficient. And I did an initial bullet journal setup and showed you how to get started with the blank notebook. This week, we're going to delve into three specific topics that I think are the three main characters of any bullet journal, which is meal planning, house cleaning, using the fly lady system or something similar, and budgeting. This video, we're going to cover the meal planning part of it, but we'll have the other two videos come out later this week. If you want to be organized, and have a stress-free life and a streamlined existence. I think those are the three main things you need outside of your to-dos and your routines and schedules for work. Meal planning is the number one way to save money, to live a stress-free life. I can't stress it enough. Um, you know, once your house is clean using the fly lady system, once you've got a good budget in place and you're saving money, meal planning is the next step. And I'm doing it first kind of out of order because this is one of my favorite things to talk about. I love to cook. Being in the kitchen and creating new recipes or experimenting with old ones or just creating time and time loved and tested recipes. It's stress free for me. I really do enjoy cooking. But you can be a meal planner and make dinner at home every night. Even if you don't like cooking, you can do so many things these days. You can have an Instapot, which really cuts out a lot of the work and makes things easier. There are thousands of Crock-Pot recipes out there. And almost anything you can cook, you can do in a Crock-Pot. So there are ways to make it easier if you don't enjoy cooking, if it's not your favorite thing to do. But here's the thing, when you don't know what you're going to make for dinner, you waste a lot of time and money because a lot of people will resort to just grabbing fast food on the way home or just ordering takeout or DoorDash. And that really does add up. If you have a menu in place and you know what you're cooking each day, you're already going to have those items on hand. There's no guesswork. There's no going in the kitchen every night and oh my, what are we going to eat tonight? What are we going to do tonight? And just kind of hemming and hawing and looking what you have. If you menu plan, you will always have on hand what you need for a recipe on any given day that you've planned to make that recipe. You can also plan ahead to make extra for leftovers if you like leftovers. Some people don't. We can make something that we really like and eat on it, you know, all week and be perfectly content as long as it's a dish we really like. I do try to space it out though and like do every other day. So typically I'll make a really big meal Monday and Tuesday, which we'll eat again Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, and Saturdays is kind of hodgepodge. But if you like leftovers, you can make huge, huge meals and just eat the leftovers. If you don't like leftovers, you can plan to make smaller meals all week, or you can make meals that you can freeze so you can eat it once and freeze the leftovers and then, then eat them once a week or once every two weeks until it's all gone. I will tell you that Keith and I have sat down and figured out how much I spend on the ingredients for most of my recipes and how many meals it makes. And they typically come out as cheap as $1.15 per person, all the way up to like $4.50 per person depending on what I'm making. There are some recipes that call for more expensive ingredients or more ingredients and maybe only make two meals. Whereas if I make a huge pot of soup, 
obviously that's going to last for months because you can freeze it and you can eat on it every so often. So those are the ones that come out to like a dollar something a meal per person. But even the ones that are $4.50 per person, you can't even eat out for that. Like you can't even have a snack for that at the restaurant anymore these days. So it really, really does save time. Uh, it saves all the guesswork. It saves a lot of stress. I don't find myself worrying or stressing out because I know ahead of time everything I'm going to cook, everything I'm going to make, and I know everything is in the kitchen waiting for me. And you will also spend less time at the grocery store. How many of you run to the store more than once a week to get stuff to make for dinner or to get stuff that you forgot? So hand in hand with this meal planning thing is your grocery list. And I'm going to show you how to do that so that you're only going to the store once a week. You could even go once every two weeks if you really want to do a big shop every two weeks. Or if you order your groceries delivered to you, you only have to deal with going and getting them and putting them away once a week or once every two weeks. I like to go every week because I don't want to deal with a whole lot of stuff like two weeks worth of food. Plus a lot of what we eat for breakfast and lunch, like deli meats and fruits and vegetables and salad, that's not really going to be stable for more than a week. So I like to go once a week to get everything we need. And so you're going to go to the grocery store less. You're going to spend less money. You're going to be planned out. You're not going to have any stress. So the first thing I want to show you is how I keep track of everything. And you can do this with the dry erase board I'm about to show you that I use. This is what I have that I purchased on Amazon. Um, you can get many things that are similar to this. You can keep track of your menu in your bullet journal. You can keep track of it on scratch pieces of paper that you stick to your fridge with a magnet. But it's important that somewhere in your kitchen or in your bullet journal that you could take to the kitchen with you, you have the week planned out. You have your menu planned out and that you have some type of grocery list in your kitchen, preferably stuck to your fridge because that's where everyone looks, that you're going to keep a running list. I will put a link to this in the description if you want to purchase this. I love this. It's the best thing I've ever gotten for our kitchen. I absolutely adore it. Um, so your running grocery list and the menu are what you're gonna build your shopping list from. And this is gonna keep you from the impulse buys. This is gonna keep you from running to the store constantly because you forgot something. You're gonna have to retrain yourself and possibly your family if you guys aren't good at this. But what Keith and I do is if we notice something is almost gone, we write it on the list. Especially if it's something you guys used all the time. I, if we get halfway through our coffee creamer, clearly that's something we use every day. So I'll write coffee creamer on the list. Halfway through your trash bags or your dish soap or your toilet paper, write it on the list. So get in the habit of when you notice something is getting low, write it on that running grocery list on the front of your fridge. Then once a week, you'll create your menu and you'll sit down and you'll make your shopping list based on what's on the running list what you need to create those recipes on your menu and what I call the all the times. So there are certain things that you're going to get every single week at the grocery store, certain staples that you're always going to need in your house. And I write a grocery list every week. I use scratch paper. So I'll use like envelopes from our bills, the backs of other pieces of paper, whatever's around here that was going to get thrown away. I will just grab and write my grocery list on because I like to save paper. But you could be creative enough to create like a template on your computer that you can print out each week that already has your staples on there so you're not having to write them each week. Bread, cheese, lunch meat, salad stuff, juice, water, whatever you guys buy every, 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 every week. <laughs> whatever you buy every single week, you can have on a template basically and then just fill in your running grocery list and the items you need for your recipes. Or you can just do what I do. I know what ours are and I fill those in first. I do write my grocery list every week. It's kind of sloppy. Like I said, I just grab the envelopes from our bills or scratch pieces of paper, but I do divide it into sections and I have the order of the store I go to. It's called Shop and Save. It's local to Pittsburgh. 
I have the store memorized in my head. So I have like deli and produce together because they're right there. And then I have shelves, dairy, frozen, and household. And I know that over in the dairy is where the bread and the peanut butter is. So I would write that in the dairy section. That way, as I go from one end of the store to the other, I'm working my way through those sections. And I'm not forgetting things. I'm not doubling back or going back and forth in the store because I forgot something over in aisle one when I'm already on aisle 15. Um, I'm very organized, but I like to do it that way. You can do it however you want, but if you go to the same store all the time and you kind of know the layout in your head, you can do that as well. You can write your list in the order that you're going to go through the store and save yourself some effort there and some time there as well. You can also do it on your phone. You can have a notepad or whatever saved on your phone with your usual suspects that you get every week and then add what you need that week specifically when you go to the store. This really keeps me from impulse buying. It's not going to keep everybody from impulse buying. I have a very severe case of self-control at the store. Um, in fact, sometimes I get home and later on think, well, I want a snack, but I didn't buy any snacks because I had self-control and I didn't get any snacks and now I really want snacks. So sometimes I'll just write on my list snack or treat and then I allow myself to pick something out while I'm there. So that's how you do your running grocery list. You just make sure that you write things down as you notice you need them. You can have a grocery list on your phone or one that you print out that already has your usual guys on there, or you can just make one each week. But this will also keep you super organized and always have what you need on hand, not only for your recipes, but what you need to run your household. You're not gonna run out of toilet paper and then paper towels the next day. You're not gonna be going to the grocery store 10 times a week. That is a huge, colossal waste of time. Gas, wear on your car. You know, just make a list, get everything you need that week. So now we're gonna talk about the menu planning specifically. What I always recommend folks to do when you first get started menu planning is just make a list of all of the tried and true and super loved recipes and foods that you already make for yourself or your family. Whether you live alone or just you and your significant other or if you have kids, you know what everybody loves. You know what everybody's favorite meals are. You know what you get complimented on. You know what you like to make maybe once a week. Maybe you eat tacos every Tuesday or spaghetti every Friday. There are some families that just love to eat certain things and they eat them over and over again and there's nothing wrong with that. So write them down. Write down all the favorite recipes because those are going to be the ones that you're going to start your menu rotation with because they're tried and true and everybody loves them. And then from there, you can add new recipes as you go. So you can keep track of your menu rotation. That's what I call it. It's just a list of things that I make. You can keep track of it on a piece of paper, in your bullet journal. I keep track of a spreadsheet and I'm gonna show you why. Let me share my screen with you again. This is my menu rotation. I keep it on this spreadsheet for two really good reasons. And one reason that just makes sense. The biggest reason I keep my recipes on this spreadsheet here, this is on my Google Drive, by the way, this isn't um, Word. So I just go to my Google Drive and I can pull up my menu rotation and I can fiddle fart around with it and edit it. But the biggest reason, um, number one, is because I can hyperlink the meals to a website. So if I have a recipe that goes with a meal, I can hyperlink it. So when I'm making that meal, I can pull it up. The second biggest reason is because I can pull this up on my phone. So I downloaded the Google Sheets app on my phone. And when I'm downstairs in the kitchen, I can pull this up exactly as you're looking at it, but it's on my phone. And then right on my phone, I can click whatever I'm making, go right to that recipe if I need to look at it um, to remind myself. Until I've made something, you know, maybe a dozen times or half a dozen times, I don't really have it memorized. I have a lot of recipes memorized up here. Uh, but it takes a while if it's a newer recipe for me to learn it, that I don't have to look at my recipes. And that's why I like to link them on the sheet. I also like to experiment. 
So I don't make every recipe exactly as the other folks write it. So if I do something different, you can see that I add myself some notes here. So this chicken enchilada, enchilada casserole is really good, but I like to add black beans and corn. I like to um, put alternative recipes too. So this is a Cajun chicken Alfredo recipe you make in the crock pot, but if I needed to make it on top of the stove, this is how I would make the homemade sauce on the stove if I wasn't doing it in the crock pot. Um, I add taco seasoning and beans to this recipe. So as I experiment with the recipes and I find out what I want to omit or what I want to add, I can put myself notes in here. And I cannot stress enough, again, how much I love to cook and experiment in the kitchen. So I do normally play around with other people's recipes to make them my own. And another reason, too, is because I can rotate this really easily. So I just bought the stuff to make this stuffed manicotti today at the grocery store. So I can take that and put it at the bottom of my list. And I bought the stuff for chili. So I will put that at the bottom of my list. So I'm rotating this menu. That didn't copy. Um, I'm rotating the menu. So as I go through and move what I just bought down to the bottom, then I'm working my way through the list. I have it separated into beef, chicken and soups <laughs> we're huge soup eaters in this house and i have tons of soup in the freezer at any given time i usually have a variety of two to four different types of soups i buy these huge containers on amazon i will pull that up and show it to you in a second i'm going to come back over here uh, while i work on that so i buy these containers on amazon Oh, they were the first one that I pulled up. Okay, so let me show you. These aren't the right size. So I buy the 32 ounce, these. I buy these 32 ounce. I will put a link down below for you because this isn't exactly what I get. This has the three different sizes. But I buy this big pack of these big ones, these 32 ounce ones. And they are freezer and dishwasher safe. So when I make a new kind of soup, I keep enough out to eat for one or two nights. And then I'll freeze the rest in these containers. And they stack in your fridge real nice. And you can put masking tape on them um, with the type of soup it is and the date. Most soups will keep for up to three months in the freezer. So you'll have that date reference. If it goes over three months, obviously you have to get rid of it. Another trick with soups, if you don't have room in your freezer to line up, all of those containers. I have so many in there because like I have so much soup in my freezer. One of my um, one of my tricks, one of Keith's grandmother's tricks with soup, she'll actually put it in like a Ziploc bag and make sure it's you know sealed and lay it flat on a cookie sheet in the freezer. Once it's frozen, you can take the cookie sheet out that just helps it lay flat. And then you can stack all these flat bags of frozen soup in your freezer. So we do have the specific rotation here for soups. We like to eat soup every week, usually every Wednesday and sometimes on Fridays also. And I'll rotate through these soups and what I have in the freezer as well. And we go back and forth from beef and chicken. I like to buy my meat in bulk packs. It's cheaper that way. So I'll buy a huge pack of beef and I'll make all these beef recipes. And then I'll buy a huge pack of chicken and make chicken recipes. And you can kind of go back and forth if you guys like turkey or pork chops. We don't really like any of that. Um, Keith and I know what we like, and that's what our menu is based on. And that's how yours should be, too, which is why you start with your most loved recipes of your family. But some people like pork chop or seafood or things like that. We're not big on it. I have here what we like. And then you can see every once in a while I have here that says something new. I will try something new. I do have my tried and true websites I like to get recipes from. I have some up to show you. I have my four favorites up to show you, but I use more than these four. Um, but whenever it says something new, I will go look and find something I think we might like. And I'll make it. And then we kind of like have to judge it. Sometimes it's not good. 
sometimes you try something new and it's not that great. And you say, okay, never again. And it doesn't go into the rotation. And sometimes it's really good. And you're like, oh, this has got to be in the rotation. So you add it to the list. And sometimes it's like, well, this was good, but, and that's where you come in with everyone is different. Everyone likes different things. So if you're like, this is good, but it was too oniony or needed more garlic, that's when you can start playing with other people's recipes. So let me show you my four favorite, like, go-to websites I go to for recipes. This is Ask Chef Dennis. These are restaurant style recipes. So these are a little more intensive. Um, he tries to make like fancy chef food at home. He does make it easy for you. If you like to cook, these are great recipes. There's going to be a lot of like sous chef work and just fancier stuff. This is called Dinner at the Zoo. So she makes a lot of really easy dinner recipes that are kid friendly and healthy. And she makes everything super duper easy. The Magical Slow Cooker is all things crock pot. This is one of my favorite websites to get recipes off of. She has so many different things on here, all these different soups and main dishes and pastas and all these things that you can make in the crock pot. And then this is Cooking in the Midwest. I love this website. I believe his name is Luke. He's an amazing cook and everything looks fancy and delicious, but it's super easy. He makes everything simple. And most of his stuff, or a lot of the stuff I should say is like one pot, or he likes to use his cast iron and I have a big cast iron I cook in as well. But a lot of it's like one pot or casserole dishes. He does everything from scratch and it's all super delicious. In fact, we tried a new recipe a couple of weeks ago from him and it has fast become a, a favorite of ours. And so it made it to the rotation. But this is a just an easy chicken, gravy, and mashed potato recipe. Keith and I actually put this all in a bowl together with the corn mixed in and a little sprinkling of cheese. And it's like a fancier, upgraded, better tasting KFC bowl. But the gravy and everything is made from scratch. So this is, his name is Luke. <laughs> Luke is an amazing guy, but um, an amazing chef. He's, he's very easy to follow and everything's from scratch but it's not hard um this is like flour and butter and chicken stock and you make your own gravy it's super easy in one pan and then you do the chicken and everything all together if you have a cast iron it works really well even if you don't that's fine too um i talk a lot about this one specifically because i do have most of my recipes from luke I have a couple from Ask Chef Dennis. I have a couple of my new ones from here. But most of my recipes either come from Sarah at the Flow Cooker or Luke from Cooking in the Midwest. When you cook from scratch, guys, stuff does taste better, but it's also cheaper and it's better for you. So if you're just taking a little bit of butter and flour and you're making a roux and then you add your chicken stock and you add the seasonings and you make the gravy the homemade way, that Luke has you do it, it comes out way cheaper than buying the packaged gravy or the canned gravy, which is full of sodium and not that good for you anyway. So you can save money that way um, by doing more stuff from scratch and following these recipes. Luke makes everything super easy. Chef Dennis isn't hard to follow. It's just, I feel like there's a couple, a couple more steps. It's for people who love to cook. But if you don't like to cook, Luke's the one to follow or even Sarah because she does like almost everything in the crock pot. But that's really it. And in a nutshell, this is one of my favorite things to talk about because I absolutely love to meal plan. I love to rotate my little list each week. It's probably the OCD in me, but I love to make my menu on my fridge on that dry erase board and then make my list and go to the store. And by the way, it's not time intensive. The first time you set up your menu rotation, it is a little time intensive because you're making the initial list of all the recipes. But after that, um, Tuesday evenings after we eat dinner, before we get up from the table and clean the kitchen and, and load the dishwasher, Keith and I will sit and make the menu together and the grocery list. It takes like five, 10 minutes. Boom. I know exactly what I'm getting at the store. I get everything I need. 
I don't have to go back out till next week. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know in the um, comment section. I'd be happy to share any of my recipes with you, any of my websites that I use for recipes. Join our Facebook group and start a thread for recipes if you want. Um, cooking is one of my passions. So thanks for listening, guys. Go make your menus. Get those grocery lists on the fridge so you can keep track of what you need. Make your menus. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.